What's up, California Surf Fishing? It's Vince Goes Fishing here, and I'm with our buddy, Kevin Mills. He came all the way up from Pasadena. We're here at Oceano. We're gonna do some perch fishing. Uh, um, what what species do you usually target? Perch, perch striper. Stri yellow, uh, yellowfin croaker. Yellowfin. You know, and I'm waiting for the water to get warm until the halibut. Oh, all right. So Kevin wants to catch his first halibut in the surf. Uh, as soon as the water gets warm. What are you looking to learn today? What is it that you're interested in learning while we're here on, at Oceano? For me in particular, learn how to read the water. How to read the water. And just to see how other people are doing it. I'm new to it. Oh, just see other people's techniques? Right. Okay. So we're gonna um, be pointing some things out about how to read water today as we go along the way. Hopefully you can pick up on some of that. And uh, just other techniques in general um, for how we do perch fishing out here. It is mid-January out here. This is about the coldest it's gonna get all year. The water is surprisingly warm this year because we have an El Nino or El Nina or whatever the heck it is. Um, so it's actually at about sitting about 58 degrees. It usually drops down about 54 here in the winter. It stayed a little warmer this winter. Um, definitely not gonna hurt anything at all in terms of fishing. But we are waiting for that, like up here in San Luis Obispo, I'd be waiting for like June to October for the, uh, for the halibut fishing. Down where you're at, you could probably catch them all year long if you know where to look for exactly. them. And then uh, they're probably gonna be biting more as the water temperatures increase. It almost seems like every time they click up a couple degrees, they go on a feast and they go on, they get, they bite. And when it's warm, and when it's warm, when it's like over, when it, down there I'd say when it's like 63, 64, 65, you're in the money, man. Okay. The halibut will be deaf. You just wanna charge, I would, when the water temps get there, I'll just be on those halibut. I would, just, I would only target halibut because that's what I like to do. Yeah. Um, but anyways, let's go perch fishing. See you guys on the beach. Talking about reading water, you can see there's a wave breaking out there to the left, and there are no waves breaking here just to our right. And if we go further to the right, you see waves breaking again. Okay, now, now I'm lying, see? So now you can see that there's waves breaking sort of right in front of us. But there, you see how it just mellowed out and it just, it just cleaned right back up again? So we're, we're sitting in front of, there's shallow water to the left where these waves are breaking. And then we've got deep water out here just kind of to the right of us a little bit. Okay. Where the waves sort of refuse to break. And then on the left, we start getting into shallow sandbars again. So um, let's just start casting. What I would like to do is fish that whole stretch from right. shallow to deep to shallow again and just comb that whole thing and see if we can locate where the fish are along the way. We've got these uh, bait and weight fishermen to our right, so we have to consider their line goes out and then the current is probably gonna drift their line over to the left a little bit. Oh, yeah. So we wanna stay away from them. So let's start here and then we'll fish our way to the right, I guess. And I have not been fishing in way too long. So I'm stoked. Drag is nice and loose. I'm gonna start with sort of a medium retrieve here. See if we get any bites. See if we locate any fish along the way here on the first few casts. Today I am using a Gamakatsu Rebarb number two light wire hook. Oh shit! Whoa! Let's back up. Jeez, that thing came out of nowhere. Jeez, man, that thing almost took me out. My, it actually almost swept my feet out from under me. You got a bite? Cool, there's fish out there. I heard that, bro. Your, your bail closed. Okay. Kevin just had a Jones there. He casted his bales, closed short, and then snap. There goes his line. Right, there's one there's a fish guys feels pretty good feels like a keeper got some weight to it yeah baby it's on that number two gamakatsu reverb hook with flip-flops and socks motor oil those number two hooks i really like those gamakatsu rebarb, rebarb hooks i think this one's hooked pretty well 
snake. You never know though, so you just gotta finesse it anyways, just to be safe. Just in case he is barely hooked. Keep your rod bent. And the only way to keep your rod bent with these little perch is to have a nice soft rod tip. Here it comes, see that wake right there in the skinny? Oh, stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Come on, baby. Bam! First slab of the day. Nice dark winter colors on him. Let's take a good look at this fish. First of all, you don't see this shell like that every day. And it's a beautiful hook set in the lower lip. When you get them in the lower lip like that, you know they're gonna stay on that hook. But um, there's no way of knowing that while the fish is still in the water. So that's your flip flops and socks, motor oil, fat paddle tail. And that's a beautiful winter perch. Let's get him in the perch pouch. Well, that feels really good, man. My first perch in so long. I, I don't know when the last time I caught one was. So that's just wonderful to have a nice big perch in my pouch here. You got a perch in your pouch? Are you just happy to see me? There we go. That's a nice one. Oh yeah, baby. Actually pulling a little bit of drag. That feels like a nice heavy fish. I'm gonna keep doing that nice easy retrieve. I'm gonna stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Stay on, stay on. He's coming in with the wave right now. Now we've got a little resistance. Hopefully we can slide him up onto the sand before the next wave comes up. Come on, baby, come on. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, 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 last final. This, he's not giving up. He's saying, no, no, no. He's giving it all he can. He's fighting for his life. Oh, jeez, I'm just gonna pick him up. There we go. We got him out of the water. What a beauty. Nice, another, another nice perch. Roughly 12 inches, I'd say. Again, in that bottom lip. Are we doing it right guys? I think we're doing something right. That motor oil, red flake, flip flops and socks, fat paddle tail is really getting her done today. Let's get eight more. All right, so that's two down. Kevin is re-rigged. Well, was taking forever. Yeah, that took a while, what happened? Um, I switched rods. Switch rods, totally re rigged completely. I have something that's called Raynos. Raynos? So my hands and feet get super, super cold. Oh, yeah. So it's then impossible. I, leave, like, so, so I think I must have the same thing because yeah, I know exactly not, what you're talking about. Common. Yeah, Raynos. But they're so cold, I'm like. You can't feel anything. I can't feel anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go slow motion. How fast do you retrieve? I generally do a medium speed retrieve when I'm fishing and searching for the fish. This is a 1.5 ounce. I wondered, I'd put a one on and I would think. One will do today. What's that? One should do just fine in these conditions. I think so. I like to do that medium speed retrieve when I'm searching for the fish, uh, just to save energy. And that way, it's moving fast enough that you can cover water. Um, it's moving and also to keep the line nice and taut. And then when I, if I get on a hot bite and the fish are just going crazy right in front of me, then I like to do a fast retrieve. And the reason I do that is because they tend to, they tend not to bite the tail off as much when you speed up. They tend to suck up that whole bait. So if you go, oh, there's one, oh, damn. So if you go too slow, that's when they tend to bite those tails off. And that might have, that, that might be what just happened actually when I got that bite just now. I got a bite, I yanked, didn't get hooked. So I wouldn't be surprised if I pull this up and find out that I'm missing the tail. And another thing I want to say about that medium retrieve speed, the retrieve speed is this. The faster you retrieve, the more weight you need to stay on bottom. Yep, sure enough, that tail is missing. See, that's what they do. Little buggers. 
And you'll notice now that I'm gonna continue fishing just like this with no tail. Doesn't matter. I catch tons of fish just like this. They, the fish do not care about tail action. They're just looking for a piece of food. The, the good thing about the tail, why I do, why I would like to have a tail, is it helps provide drag at the back of the bait, which helps keep, keep the bait straight. But as long as I'm doing like a medium speed retrieve, this thing should be fine. I don't think it's gonna be spinning, spiraling, anything like that. We'll see though. We start bringing up a twisted leader then maybe I'll change my bait. But as long as my bait's not coming up all, as long as my leader's not getting all twisted up, I'm not gonna change the bait. I'm gonna keep fishing it just like this. The most important thing is just that that dang thing is not spinning and spiraling. So as long as it's staying straight, I'll keep fishing with it just like this. Besides, I've got that bait super glued on there. So I'm committed to it. I'm, I really don't want to tear it off and put another bait on there unless I absolutely have to. Now, if you're gonna do a fast retrieve, then a little more weight helps it to stay down on bottom. So you can only go so light. If you're gonna go down to like three quarter of an ounce, like down south of Point Conception and Orange County and San Diego and stuff. Yeah, we, you know, down there, I would fish three quarter ounce Carolina rigs for perch all day. You're not casting as far. And, but up here, I need to cast really far. I've got bigger waves on average, um, more current on average. So, and I like to do a faster retrieve on average too. So that means uh, a, a heavier weight is gonna be necessary. So I've been fishing with 1.5 ounce. And the thing about it is I lose a lot of sensitivity with that much weight. Can't really even feel fish when they bite sometimes. And it's also kind of exhausting on my arms and everything. So I've been thinking, I, I don't really want to go all the way down to one ounce. I mean, I will, if it's a calm day, I'll go down to one ounce, and maybe do a, a little bit of a slower retrieve. But um, I've been interested in trying a 1.25 ounce, one and a quarter, you know, something right in between. I've, and I just never heard anyone talk about one and a quarter ounce weights. Never seen one before, but I was just falling asleep one night and I thought, wait, why don't I try one and a quarter ounce? So I went on eBay and they were kind of hard to find and they were very expensive, but I managed to find five. I got five of them. I think I paid like 10 bucks for these five egg weights, 1.25 ounce. And I've got one on me right now. And um, for the rest of the year, I'll be fishing with that 1.25 ounce to see how it performs. I want to know how does it perform on days with big swells? Like, you know, what's the limit? What's, what's the capacity of that thing? What, what can it do? How does it work out on small swell days? Can I just rely on the 1.25 ounce every day, no matter, regardless? Um, how fast can I retrieve it? You know, does it work? I think it's gonna work out really well, actually. And if those 1.25 ounces ten, turn out to be my preference, which took two years to come to that conclusion because I test things thoroughly. I spent a lot of time with things before I make any kind of conclusions. But if I turn out to love the 1.25 ounce, then I'm gonna go ahead and make Battlestar 1.25 ounce weights. We'll make some tungsten egg weights for Carolina rig perch fishing, 1.25 ounce. That'd be sweet. Man, I sure would like to see Kevin's rod bend over and just like uh, watch him land a big old slab. It's not a hot bite right, right. here. Just but, bite. but we've had a bite here and there so yeah it's kind of worth it to keep fishing and try to pick some up but um if you get bored and we want to move on I'm, I'm fine with that too I, you know what um, i really am pretty new to this just working on cast just working on it i'm a conventional real guy okay but i just have my shoulder rebuilt oh you did so left I, or right i can't retrieve a conventional right now okay got you so okay i don't even care what you guys Nice, but... Yeah, I definitely want to see you catch a fish. Hey, I want to give you a tip, man. If you're, especially if you're dealing with uh, a shoulder surgery mm -hmm. and you're looking to go easy on your joints and stuff, the faster the reel, the better. Mm -hmm. The faster the reel, the less you're going to be cranking, the less stress you're putting on all your joints. Uh -huh. So I really like the Vanford. It's a really fast. It's the fastest reel. The Vanford 5000, mm -hmm. fastest spinning reel I know of. Also, it's the lightest spinning reel I know of. For me, it's been great. It has lasted for months between services. Okay. Yeah, it's been great. If you fish a Vanford 5000, you fish one of these reels, uh -huh. 
you're never gonna want to fish any other reel. Yeah, you're, it's it's so smooth and so light, so fast. It's just the best. I love it. Thank you, Shimano. That's all I gotta say. And their service center is fantastic. They'll communicate with you. him on that last cast hooked him on this one feels pretty freaking heavy actually not even really shaking his head a whole lot just dead heavy weight that's gonna be a big fish dude oh yeah this fish is not even really woken up yet oh yeah and the guy on my left here is hooked up oh man this is heavy this fish feels pretty heavy. This might be the biggest one so far. We're going to see. Let's just finesse him in just in case he's barely hooked. I don't think he's barely hooked because he shook his head pretty hard there for a sec. Dude, this fish is heavy, man. I cannot believe how heavy this fish is. This is a big perch, dude. Oh, man. What is going on? This is exciting now. I'm getting pumped. I'm starting to get that anxiety, that anxious feeling in my chest. I don't want to lose him. He's right there. He's in the skinny. Come on, baby. Just maintain that same amount of pressure. He's coming in sideways. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah, baby. Yes. Yes. Woo! That's the biggest one so far. What a beauty. Guys, you can get these flip-flops and sock scrubs and get a 10% discount. Use code VinceGoesFishing at casurffishing.com. Like California Surf Fishing. So go to casurffishing.com. You'll find the flip-flops and sock scrubs. Punch in code VinceGoesFishing, 10% off. Well done, sir. <laughs> Look at the beautiful black belly on her. So Kevin and I were uh, just discussing the weight of the leader. And for my first whole year, year and a half of perch fishing out here in the Pismo area, I was using 20 pound fluorocarbon. And that worked pretty dang well. I never had to fuss with it, like it wasn't gonna break. Uh, sometimes we get into these schools of like 14 inch perch and it's one after the next after the next. And, you know, you don't want to have to stop and put on a new leader when you're on a hot bite like that. So that's the 20 pound uh, advantage. On the other hand, I wanted to try using lighter weight lines just to see if I got more bites and caught more fish with it. So this year, or I guess about six months ago, I started using 10 pound test. And I'm just gonna keep using that 10 pound test for, you know, a year or so and just see, does it ever let me down? Is there any disadvantage to it? If not, then I'll probably stick with the 10 pound test I think I might be getting more bites. You were just asking me about leader length. About leader length, yeah. Leader length, okay. You know, there are a lot of, especially you get you know, get lost in the internet. It's like, oh, two feet, three feet, oh, 18 inches. Right. You know, yeah. everybody has a different. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you wonder how much of this stuff is like really objective or just like subjective preference or right. um, some people say that a shorter leader is the key to not getting a, a twisted up fouled leader, like the shorter leader is foul less. I've heard that as well, yeah. Um, and I wonder, I, I really wonder if that's if that's really what's going on. There's different applications, you know, like if you're Corbina fishing, like if you're down South Corbina fishing in the skinny, um, there's a lot of current that's like, so it's crashing right there and washing up and they use shorter leaders for that reason so that way they don't get all you're also you're doing more like almost like a bait and wait thing with a carolina rig so mm. really, really long what we're right doing there. up here is we're casting really far and then keeping the thing moving the whole time and so keeping it moving the whole time is kind of the trick to keeping that long leader straight so it doesn't 
swing forward in the current and wrap up and get fouled. If you right. stop with a long leader like this and just wait and just pause and You're do sort of vein wipe, it's gonna tangle. It's gonna foul up that leader. But um, if you keep it moving, it won't foul up as much. So, uh, Tui taught me to use these four foot um, leaders, sometimes even five foot leaders. And I've experimented with even six foot leaders. And I, at that point, I think it's getting too long. I don't feel the bite as much. They can pick it up and swim around with it for a second before I even notice that they're there. Ah, okay. Um, but the five foot seems to be really nice. So I pretty much just do my wingspan. Okay. Which is my whole wingspan. And that's about five feet. So um, that's what I do. I do the five foot leader and I just keep it moving to keep it straight. And it works really well. I think, I think there is something about um, that they have the freedom to pick it up suck it up and start swimming away with it before ah, bam all yeah, of a sudden yeah, they get yeah, hooked yeah, got it yeah and so yeah i use the four foot leaders out here when i'm perch fishing with grubs but you know that's not to say that everybody should no but it works for you yeah it works for me up here and down south if i was to go perch fishing down south i don't know maybe i would shorten it up a little bit maybe i'd probably i'd probably do this just because i'm in the habit of doing this mm -hmm. long leader but if I was Corbina fishing, yeah, I probably would keep it at around two feet. And I use light, lighter weight and just pitch it out really shallow and I'm not casting very far. And yeah, maybe even just 18 inches is all you really need. I did a lot of Carolina rigging down south with 18 inch leaders and I, I caught a bunch of fish. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's that critical. All right, well, I think it's more about knowing why. I don't know why. Two no, but, but when you talk about, okay, if I'm fishing Corbina, maybe I wanted this thing to, like, okay, situational. Okay, for application, situational, What's totally. Yeah. I mean, Tui once saw me with, like, a three-foot leader, and he said, uh, you need at least a four-foot leader, man. Just retire really quick and put on a put on your leader a little bit longer. And I was like, okay. And I went ahead and did it, and I was wondering why. If my mentor says do it, I do it. Because <laughs> if I see him catching fish, 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 then I'm, I'm going to do exactly what he's doing. I want to learn what the model that works and try to understand why it works why i wanted way. to come out here with you <laughs> <laughs> thanks man it's neat that i'm i guess i'm elevating I, i'm i'm learning at some point this dude becomes a teacher yeah perch fishing has been the most challenging thing to learn for me personally um it's taken the longest to learn it's the most mysterious trying to find the fish and trying to sort out the rigs and the baits they're all quite problematic yeah. um i had issues with halibut fishing which i totally solved i, I think i've mastered that but um, perch fishing is taking longer for me to really learn and understand and master. So, all right, which moves us to our now? Are we gonna stay or are we gonna? Move? You know, I noticed that the end of the beach is right down there within walking distance. I think we should just walk and just fish this whole stretch all the way back to the truck, all right. and then we can get in the truck and drive north and go try those other holes. Okay. Also, it would be sort of like an island in front of us. By that I mean it's all deep water. And then there's this one shallow sandbar, just a peak, where a just very short length of wave breaking and crashing. So it's deep on either side of it. It's just this one shallow, one short little peak of a wave like that. Anytime I see something that looks like an island, just an isolated little chunk of sandbar somewhere, I always want to fish that. But I got to tell you, I'm not seeing it. I've been staring at the water here for a minute or two and I don't know where that little island went. Where did it go? We are seeing it consistently over and over, breaking. And then once we got over here, it just sort of disappeared. There it is. Straight ahead. See that? Little strip of whitewash right there? Bam! And then it hits something right there too. So that's where I was seeing something. Let's that's to the left of where my bait's at right now. You can see how that wave is rising up and now bam it crashes right there. So that's the island I was talking about. Let's try and get over that sucker if we can. All the way out there. I got a good feeling about that structure right there. It might hold fish or it might not. Sometimes you see the most beautiful piece of structure and you're just so surprised that there's no fish in there. It happens. So just because you see structure doesn't mean you're gonna find fish. But when you find fish, they're pretty much always 
on some kind of stretcher. Okay, so we're looking at water quality now. Look how murky it is. The question is... clear right over... Yeah. Is it actually chocolate milk? Um, by that I mean opaque. Is it truly opaque water with suspended organic matter or clay or silt? No, it's not. If you take a close look, you'll see that it's actually quite clear, transparent water, but it's churned up with large grains of sand. That's what's up. That's what you want to see. You want that. So there's two kinds of murky water. You got the kind that's actually opaque because you have suspended solids that could be clay, silt, or organic matter. And that, you don't want to fish in that. I mean, it's just like a waste of time. But here, we have clear water that's just churned up with sand. That is what you want to see. That's good water. So, let's keep fishing. Kevin just asked me, how long is your rod? And I told him it's nine foot. And, you know, when I first started fishing, I kind of assumed the longer the rod, the further you're going to cast, the better. But let me show you something. If I... If I grab my rod right here at the middle, I can use my right hand, I can reach the rod tip. So I can, I'm holding it like, I don't really want to hold it any further up than that because it's like, yeah. it loses integrity. So this is about as far forward as I want to hold it with my left hand. But then with my right hand, I can, oh, Kevin is on. He's got a fish, fish, fish. With my right hand, I can reach the rod tip. Yeah, drag him up on the beach, bro. Nice and easy. And so what's, the, ad the advantage of being able to reach your rod tip is you can un unwrap the line from your rod tip if it gets wrapped up. Dude, do I have a fish on? No. Nice, man. Kevin's got himself a slab. There we go. Victory. Nice, dude. Victory, baby. And what kind of grub did you get him on? Flip-flops and socks. Uh, motor oil. That's your flip-flops and socks motor oil right there. There's Kevin's second perch of the day. Quite heavy. Yeah! Nice fish. Yo, Nothing but quality today. That's my fourth and you can see he's hooked a little bit gentler there. Not quite as deep of a hook set. There's number five guys on that flip flops and socks motor oil. Beautiful fish. All right, so that's how I did today. I got five nice, all quality fish. So how'd it go, Kevin? It went well. It went well. I mean, I caught, I landed two, I farmed two, and I had a couple bites, so that was more than If I come out here by myself, none of that would <laughs> Well, you never know. It's always a lot of chance involved in this game. I lost a couple too, um, but most of them stayed on. And I think what makes a big difference, we were talking about this earlier, is using a good quality hook. I really like the Gamakatsu Rebarb Light Wire Hook. And I use them in number two or number four. Today I use number two, and I think I'm gonna stick with the number two hooks, a little bit bigger. And um, I was getting really nice deep hook sets in the bottom or in the top. None of them were barely hooked today. Uh, yeah, you know, both of mine, they inhaled it too. Inhaled it, yeah. Um, I find that if you keep the bait moving at a reasonable rate, like a medium pace, medium to fast pace, they tend to suck up the whole bait more. If I'm just sort of being lazy and just doing a slow retrieve, uh, first of all, that's when my leader starts wrapping up and getting all twisted, but also that's when they start nibbing off the, the tail of my bait as well, more frequently. Oh, I got it. I got it. So a fast retrieve. Little faster little They're like, hey, I better just grab that thing before it gets away. They don't have the time to slow down and be picky. Right. And, and target a specific little spot. Okay. They have to just suck the whole thing up before it gets away. And uh, Kevin was using an owner EBI hook, and that's also a really good choice. What I like about the rebarb, the Gamakatsu rebarb, is that it actually has a rebarb, a barb facing in the opposite direction, and you can kind of pinch the bait down onto that rebarb. You can see on the owner EBI hook, what you have there are the traditional bait holder barbs. There's two so of them. so they're bigger on this okay? Gamakatsu. Now take a look at the owner, I'm sorry, the Gamakatsu rebarb. There is oh, a yeah, big, yeah, that's way black, more significant. plastic, a uh, barb that's uh -huh. facing in the opposite direction right there and you so you can pinch your bait down on that and it and it pinches down into it also if you put some super glue on there and pinch it down on there 
man, you've got a, a bait that is stuck on that hook really well. So I really highly recommend these Gamakatsu Rebarb Light Wire. Number two is my choice. You might want to use the number fours if you like a smaller hook. But um, thanks for fishing with me, Kevin. Thank you. It was a blast. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> it was a blast. It was a blast. And we'll keep cranking, we'll keep learning. We'll do and we'll, some more. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, jump back out there uh, for a second session tomorrow. So maybe we'll see you there.